بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My brothers and sisters in Islam Today inshallah we continue the series on the hereafter and last week we left off speaking about the great intercession where we the people will be gathered and they will see the most unusual and frightening things they have ever witnessed and everyone will know that this is the day of judgment all the beginning of creation and the end of the creation will be gathered the humans the jinns the animals and even the angels will be gathered for that day of judgment and every single one of them will be judged except those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has exempted there will be a group from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his nation they will be exempted from the judgment from the accountability we're going to talk about that in a minute, inshallah. But everyone who had a responsibility to be carry out, whether against himself or herself, to carry out towards people or someone or something, or taking the right of someone else, they have to be accountable. Even those who died in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the martyrs, everything of theirs will be forgiven except if they have taken a right from someone or victimized someone once in their life. Only that cannot go without being dealt with on that day. And we mentioned that the people will go around looking for someone to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala courageous enough on that day who has that ability and that honor to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin the judgment. You see, the judgment hasn't begun yet. All that's happened so far is a gathering. A gathering, whether we like it or not, to the place from where we are going to be taken to be judged. From where we are going to be taken to be judged. So Allah knows best it won't be on this particular earth. And even wherever we're resurrected, according to a large number of scholars and tafasir, is that the judgment will not be in the place where we are resurrected from our graves. And the people will go to Adam salam, and we will ask him to ask Allah to begin the hisab. You know, you've all been students before and you work all year, all semester until that report comes. Do you recall the day when you were with your father or mother and you have to go and collect that report and you don't know what your marks are? You're waiting anxiously, don't know what your marks are. And you're afraid of bad marks or you're afraid of not getting the mark that you wanted, you're just anxious. So this is the moment, we are anxious. It gets to a point, so anxious to a point, Allah knows how long this is, to a point where the people will say, Khalas, let's, we want to know if we're going to be in Jannah or Jahannam. We can't bear standing here like this, with the sun only a, a few probably even a, not more than a mile away from us. In some hadiths it says not even a, the reach of a hand away 
Allah knows best. People are sweating and we explain the different situations people will be in. So we will go to Adam alayhi salam. And Adam alayhi salam will say, nafsi nafsi. Last week, I mentioned a different hadith. This week, there are other hadiths which mention that the prophets will respond in just slightly different way, but in the same meaning. He will say, nafsi nafsi. I didn't mention this last week. Myself, myself. And then he says, my Lord is angry this day. And then he adds, I disobeyed my Lord in one thing. And then he says, go to the one after me. And so we continue from prophet to prophet. And each one of them will say, I am not qualified for this. Myself, myself. I've done this or I've done that. I need to answer to this. We finally reach Isa alayhi salam. And he will say, nafsi, nafsi. The people have taken me as a god. I have to answer to this. I'm not qualified today for this particular intercession. This requires someone special. In the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, the Sahih hadith, he said, every Prophet has asked for that special dua which Allah had given to every Prophet and Messenger. As for me, I left mine. I left mine to be used today on the Day of Judgment. So finally we reach Muhammad wasallam, And he says, Ana laha, ana laha. I am the one qualified for this. I am the one ready for this. He says, I prostrate to my Lord. Allah knows how long I prostrate. What I say in there. I say dua and dhikr that I've never said before. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has names that we don't know of yet. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentions many remembrances of Allah that is never used before. Allah knows how long. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And from this hadith, we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will first speak to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from among the human beings. He will say to him, Ya Muhammad, irfa' ra'sak. Lift your head up, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Washfa' to shafa' intercede, I'll give you intercession. Was'al tu'ta and ask for anything I'm going to give you. The Prophet ﷺ lifts his head and he says, Ya Rabbi Ummati Ummati, oh my Lord, my nation, my nation, those who followed me. There are several hadiths now stating what exactly happened straight after that. But the combination of them all sums up to this that every people will go to those whom they used to worship and they will go to their Imams. What I mean by Imam, I don't mean religious as in our shaykhs, no. Imams means leaders, those who led them and those whom they followed. We mentioned this last week. And the only ones that will be, and the other people will go to their prophets. The only ones left there are the nation, on the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Us. We are the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu Those who came after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and believed in him and accepted his message. We will stand there. The good Muslim with the bad Muslim. All Muslims, but good with bad. And among them will be hypocrites. The hypocrite is a person, the real hypocrite that we're talking about here, are the people who used to say on the outside that they're Muslims, but on the inside, they're actually of another religion. But they were there to spy on Muslims and to cause them harm. These are called munafiqun. They will be there as well. And they will try to prostrate again behind the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prostrates, they see him prostrating and they want to prostrate with him or they want to stand with us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that their backs will be made like steel and they will not be able to prostrate and they will fall flat on their face. This is in the Quran, we mentioned this last week. These munafiqun will be taken away by the angels of torture and they'll be dealt with in the most severest manner. They won't be placed into hellfire yet, just then, but they'll be taken away and they know what their fate is. 
and I will soon see what's going to happen to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they will run after them to take some of their light but they cannot get any of their light because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala builds or lets a wall like a structure come between them and the believers and they will say please give us some of your nur so that we can cross because you need nur on that day without light from your good deeds in this life you cannot have any guidance on that day and these hypocrites will not be able to get that on one side of the wall there is torture and on the other side there is mercy the mercy on the side of the believers but we'll come to that later inshallah as this is happening the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends yanzilullah we explained last week there is nothing like him and he hears and sees all things so when the hadith say Yanzilullah, Allah descends, we do not understand how. But there is a reality to it. So the Lord comes. This is also in Surah Al-Fajr. وَجَاءَ رَبُّكْ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا Your Lord and His angels will come line after line. The angels will come line after line. And your Lord will come on that day. Again, the reality of this coming, we don't know. But there is a reality to it. The point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there to begin the judgment. And then above us we see books. Just before the books are brought, Allah says in the Quran, وَجِيءَ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِجَهَنَّمْ وَجِيءَ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمْتُ لِحَيَاتِي Suddenly, hellfire is brought. G means someone brings it. Right at that point, you see before you, everybody sees angels coming line by line. Hellfire is being dragged by other angels. It's coming. Everyone can see it. It's coming. The first thing you do, as in the hadith, is that they hear it. They hear Jahannam coming. So first you don't see it, but it's coming. You hear it first. And when it comes close enough, the people see it. The first thing is they hear it as it's, as it's being brought. And in another hadith says, وَلَهَا زَفِيرٌ وَشَهِيقٌ It will have this terrible roar of breathing out and terrible roar of breathing in. A terrible roar that frightens and terrifies every being on the face of the earth. Except for the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will be standing with the strength that Allah has given him on that day. Allah says, that day when Jahannam is brought, everybody remembers. But what will remembrance do for them? Some of them will say, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. Oh, I wish I would have put forth more good deeds for my life. What does that mean? More good deeds for my life. Listen to the language. I wish as the hellfire is brought among the Muslims and non-Muslims they say I wish I would have brought forward more good deeds for my life for my life what life the life is over We've, we're dead so why the, why, why are the people saying I wish I would have put more forward more good deeds lihayati for my life because that's when we will really know and understand those who didn't believe and those who had doubts that day you will know that the life we were living here is not the life. The real life is where you're going to go next. The life is in Jannah. In Jannah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the life in hellfire. He doesn't even say it's a life. He says he will not die in it, nor will he live. So there's no life. And there's no death. What is it then? The life is in Jannah. So they will say, Oh, I wish. In other words, I could have done more for my good life, for, to, to enter Jannah and live a life. That's when they see Jahannam. Even among the good people, 
they will say, I wish I would have done more. Because when Jahannam is brought, the terror is so amazing. So amazing, unbelievable, that everybody thinks they're doomed. Jahannam, you'll forget, you'll, you'll forget everything. The sight of Jahannam, the, the, the hearing, the, the sound of Jahannam is unbearable. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the Sahih hadith as well, I look, فَإِذَا بِإِبْرَاهِيمِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ Ibrahim عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ قَدْ جَثَ عَلَى رِكْبَتَيْهِ He has fallen onto his two knees and holds onto the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner we don't know. And he says, and, and he is afraid. نفسي, Allah, he says, Allahumma sallim, Allahumma sallim. O oh my Lord, peace. O oh my Lord, give us peace. When Jahannam is brought, Ibrahim alayhi salam says that. Falls to the ground. Falls to the ground. Says, Rabbi sallim sallim. It's like when you're begging someone, please have mercy. O oh my Lord, have mercy, have mercy. O oh my Lord, give us peace, give us peace. So what about the rest of us? Poor beings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us on that day. وَلَهَا زَفِيرٌ وَشَهِيقٌ It has a breathing outwards and inwards. This zafir and shahiq, why is it breathing this way? First of all, to terrify. And number two, it's hungry and viciously wanting to eat those who are criminals. And, um, and with this exhalation and inhalation, it's producing uh, uh, words. Words as it's, you know, when a person breathes in and out and is talking, talking out, is talking inwards, as he's taking breath in and out. That's how Jahannam is talking while it's breathing out and talking while it's breathing in, saying, Where are the criminals? Where are the sinners? Where are the disobedient? Where are those who challenged Allah? Where are they? I'm hungry. In another hadith, it says that when Jahannam is brought, it starts coming closer. And the eyes of the kuffar, of the disbelievers who refuse to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the heat of Jahannam, their eyes explode. The heat. In the hadith, it states that when it's about a thousand years' journey, away from them a thousand years journey away from them the heat reaches the eyes and the eyes explode however for the believers Allah subhanahu wa states again in an ayah I'm saying again meaning I'm reciting it again to you about the believers as for the believers the angels grab them and they protect them and they calm them down the calming down is happening at that moment angels running to believers angels running to disbelievers like that Angels coming line by line. What are, they, what are they here for? What's going on? They run to people. And you find some of them comforting and some of them uh, bringing bad news. Some of them giving good news. Some of them giving bad news. And you see light emanating and darkness going less. And people start to see what's happening. So line by line. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ And also, you will see eight huge, gigantic angels like no eye has ever seen or imagined in the hearts, angels carrying the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mentioned last week that in the hadith it states that the angel, the distance between the earlobe and the shoulder is 300 years journey, that was a mistake. It's actually more. I'm not sure, can't recall how much, but it was more. More than 300 years journey, closer to a thousand years journey for a person who is riding on a horse fast. That's the Sahih Hadith in Muslim. Between the earlobe and the shoulder. So they have an earlobe and a shoulder, these angels. And this is the distance just from there to there. On a riding on a fast horse, 1,000 years journey. So how huge are these angels? And I also mentioned last week, which I'd like to correct today, mentioned that the sky, first sky to the second sky, is like a ring thrown into a desert until we reached the throne. And then I mentioned last week that the kursi of Allah, which is above the throne, is larger than the throne. No, it's actually the opposite. I made a mistake. The arsh of Allah, the throne of Allah, is the largest creation Allah has created. And the whole universes, all the seven skies, 
and the earths, everything, is like a drop in the ocean compared to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A drop. A drop of a mustard seed, as in the hadith. In another hadith, like a ring in space. What, where's the end of space? Allahu alam. Like a ring fi fala in, in space. You don't know where its end is compared to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eight angels carry it. How the, the nature of this carrying, the reality of this carrying, we don't know. Allahu alam. But there is a carrying. And the throne of Allah is brought. And this is all a sign that even the largest, strongest creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has created are submissive before him. So what's left for us on that day? What do you, imagine seeing all these sight. What are we? Who are we anymore? All those mutakabbirun, those people who had pride and arrogance and saw that there were some strong, uh, you know, some strong people here on earth. Where are, what are they going to think? On, what's going to happen to them on that day? How are they going to perceive this? Allahu Akbar. On that day when the throne is brought and eight angels are carrying and Jahannam is brought and so on and so forth, Allah says, on that day you will be subjected. You have to stand. You have to face what's going to be shown in your records. You have to face and be judged. You're going to have to face where you're going. No secret will be hidden away. لا تخفى منكم خافية. When Jahannam is seen eating itself away, some hadith state that the color of Jahannam is not red, nor is it white, but black. Although one hadith is weak about that, the other hadith strengthen it, that its color is not red, it's a dark color. There's no light in there. And there are, a hadith came in Bukhari and Muslim that 70,000 angels, 70,000, will be the ones pulling or are bringing Jahannam on that day. When, let me just remind you, when Prophet ﷺ intercedes and Allah says, ask, and he says, my ummah, all of this is happening right there and then. Jahannam is brought. Allah descends. The angels are carrying the thrones. The books are spread above us. We know there are records. Angels are going to different people. Yeah, and it's, get, it's a setup. The court, the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being set up now. Everything's, but before our eyes, we're seeing all of this. Imagine that. And you, it's your fate. At that point, every person says, I don't know my father or my mother or my wife or my husband or my children. I only know myself. I just want myself. I am ready not to give even one hasana away. I can't afford it. That's how terrifying it's going to be. 70,000 angels bring Jahannam. How do they bring them? How do they bring them? The hadith states that the 70,000, they hold Jahannam back. So they're grabbing it. Allah says in the Quran, when it sees them from a far distance, when it sees them from a far distance, سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا As in the Qur'an. This is an, this is an ayah in the Qur'an. They hear a terrifying roar and a terrifying inhalation and exhalation. And then it begins to attack. It begins to wanting to attack. Like a vicious lion. A wild, hungry lion. But Jahannam. And these 70,000 angels... Did I say 70,000 angels? I meant 70,000 leashes, like ropes. On every rope, there are 70,000 angels. Rasulullah said, It has 70,000, you know, like ropes or leashes. We don't know what these ropes look like, but they're, they're like ropes that... that, that Angels hold on to to control Jahannam like a beast. Sab'una alfi zimam, alfa zimam. Ma'a kulli zimam, hadith of the Prophet, Ma'a kulli zimam, sab'una alfa malakin yajuruna. 70,000 angels on each rope carrying it along. 
And in the hadith, in another hadith, they are controlling Jahannam. So they, so it doesn't, so if, what, if they let go, it'll eat everyone. So they, they pull it back. So that's 70,000 times 70,000. You calculate. 4 billion, 900 million angels. Don't ask me about their size. So what is the size of Jahannam? Size of Jahannam. We're going to talk about that in later classes to come, but because we just, we just want to try and sort of let you understand the reality of that moment before I go on. I'll just give you one hadith. That the Prophet ﷺ was walking. This is Sahih hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. He was walking with his companions and then they heard a rumble. Like, a, like an earthquake. Rumble. This rumble was strange. The Prophet ﷺ became pale and said to them, This is a stone thrown into Jahannam 70 years ago. Stone dropped into Jahannam 70 years ago. Now it reached the bottom, and this is the rumble you hear. Don't ask me about the gravity in Jahannam. Don't ask me about the, the laws of physics in, in Jahannam. I don't know. 70 years, according to our calculations on earth, the stone took to reach the bottom of Jahannam. Now, so if there was gravity from the moon to the earth, and you dropped a stone, it wouldn't take 70 years. It will take much less than that. For a rocket from the moon to earth with thrusts, if there was a rocket from space, with thrusts, how long does it take to reach the earth? So Allahu Alam. Another hadith, one more, that the size of the person who enters Jahannam is so huge that the back tooth is the size of a mountain. So how big is the people? So how big is Jahannam? Or does Jahannam grow as it eats? Allahu Alam. It's huge. That's when Ibrahim alayhi salam goes to his knees as well. Everybody, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself. At that point, my dear brothers and sisters, the records are above us and they begin to fall into the right hand and left hand, some behind their backs, because the disbelievers or those who are destined to hellfire, even from among the Muslims, they will see Muslim, good people who have passed receive their books in their right. And they see what happens to them. So they hide their left arm behind their backs. But the book is forced into their left hand behind their backs. That's why there is an ayah in the Quran. Whoever receives their book behind their backs. This is the tafsir of it. Another ayah it says, Those who receive their book in their left. The books, what are they? They are the records, which only Allah knows their true nature and description. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them in the Quran, suhuf and kutub. Kutub, kitab, a book. What kind of book? It's something that records information. Suhuf, books with, with covers in them, with pages. But they are not like the pages of this earth. These records, these books, these books with pages, they have every single atom's worth, mustard seed's worth, atom's worth of deed that we have, each and every one of us has ever done in their life. From the moment they're born to the moment they, they've died. Once you die, these records are closed. They are the two angels on the right and left to record them. And there are other deeds that you do which Allah subhanahu wa does not record in your book. Do you know which deed that is? As-siyam, fasting. According to the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, that Allah said that everything a abad does, a servant does, is for him. 
or her. إِلَّا الصِّيَامِ فَهُوَ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ Except for fasting, it is mine and I will reward, for, I will reward it on a day of judgment in a special way, in a different way. Yani the angels don't know how, much reward, how many rewards you have received for your fasting. Voluntary and the compulsory. This is unknown to the angels, the amount of rewards a person receives for their fasting because it's such a valued thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the records are received, you begin to be judged on every point in there. Now, how the judgment happens with the records, there are different ways. Every person will be judged in, a, in their own way. That's why you'll find in the Quran and the Hadith different ways that Allah judges people and, and holds them accountable and questions them. Different. There are so many various ways. Some people only receive their records and then suddenly they see their actions in front of them. But nothing is judged. They only see it. And then they move on to the next stage, which is the scale and then the sirat. We're going to talk about that in next classes to come. These are the believers. Aisha, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man Whoever is judged or put on the, on, on, the, on the judgment panel, on the judgment stand, then they will be tortured. They will be tortured. Aisha radiallahu said, Ya Rasulullah, but what about the ayah in the Quran where Allah says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا Whoever receives their book and they write, they'll be judged an easy judgment. Why? If we're judged, we're going to be tortured. He said, Ya Aisha, those people who receive their book and they write, they will only see their deeds in front of them. تُعْرَضُ عَرْضًا It's only displayed in front of them. But they don't debate anything. They don't argue anything. He said, the ones that be tortured are the ones who where there is argumentation between them and the angels or between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about their deeds. Those who argue are going to be tortured. Why? Because once you argue denying something, you know that in the end Allah is going to bring all the witnesses and in the end you're going to find out that what you were doing was actually lying and you were trying to hide it and now you're going to be punished for it. So the only people who deny their actions are first of all the disbelievers and possibly among the believers who were very weak in their iman, left their compulsory deeds for example in this life. Some people will be called secretly to be judged about something which will be made for the angels to be forgotten. Let's look at this. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on a hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas and others مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وَسَيُكَلِّمُهُ اللَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ تُرْجُمَانٍ There isn't any one of you except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to them one by one one, one on one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to you and there is no translator interpreter between you and Allah So everyone will have this. And the Prophet ﷺ is explaining this to his ummah, to the nation of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. This particular secretive judgment, does it also happen to the disbeliever? According to many ayat in the Qur'an, yes. According to many ayat in the Qur'an, it is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the fact that they will be questioned. فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ Allah says, we shall surely ask them. فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ We will ask those whom messengers were sent to. وَلَوْ تَرَى وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ If only you would see the day when they will be standing before their Lord for God, Allah to judge them. إِنَّ إِلَيْنَا إِيَابَهُمْ ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا حِسَابَهُمْ 
they will return to us and then we are going to judge them. They will be questioned about what they used to accuse and do wrong. Allah says, Now the verses that say that they will not speak to Allah, Allah says, On that day they will be covered away from their Lord. And Allah also says, لا يكلمهم الله. Allah will not speak to them. How do we correlate between these two? The ayat that say Allah will speak to them and will ask them and will judge them is another time. It's before the judgment progresses. But as it progresses, the ulama say it is afterwards in other situations where Allah turns away from them and they plead, but there is no more response. And that in itself is a torture. They plead, Rabbana, give us, now we know, give us, let us go back, keep it one more day, let us go back. There's no more response. Allah says, they will be taken away from their Lord. They will not speak to them. He will not respond to them. But will they see Allah? No. The seeing of Allah is actually a reward. And this will only be done in Jannah. And that will be to later classes to come, inshaAllah ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, the angels will call the people one by one. And they will say, Fulan ibn Fulan, so and so, son of so and so. If he was a criminal, he will be pale and he'll go darkened and be afraid. The angels will know him. They'll grab him and take him. And he will be judged or she will be judged. And they'll be given their book in their, in their left. And they'll be sent with the most horrible face. People will know them. For whatever action they used to do, they will know them by that action. Fifty angels gather around them and there are colors of torture that they will have to deal with. One of them is the angels will grab them with brass claws, sharp brass claws that will enter into their forehead, into here, Nawasi, the forelock. Allah calls it the lying sinful forelock. Allah is talking here saying we shall take them by their forelock their lying sinful forelock let him call whoever he wants to call on that day. No one will help him. So behold, you better prostrate and worship your Lord. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُعْرَفُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ بِسِيمَاهُمْ فَيُؤْخَذُ بِالنَّوَاصِي وَالْأَقْدَامِ The disbelievers, the criminals will be known by their faces. When their names are called out, the angels see them. And they notice how terrified they are. They know what they've done. Allah says, فَيُؤْخَذُ بِالنَّوَاصِ وَالْأَقْدَامِ Immediately, their forelocks and their legs are grabbed. Like this. So their, their forelocks are, are, so their body is arched and curved, so that their forelocks hit their legs like this, and the angels grab them like this. They're like a ring. And they throw them from place to place. In another hadith, it says that their brass claws immerse into their forelock and into their legs. And after the judgment is done, taking them from place to place, in the end, they drag them on their faces, on their faces, and they grab them from their forelock and their legs and throw them into Jahannam. These disbelievers who knew the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deliberately refused to follow it, on that day, they will deny but what's worse than that are the people among the Muslims who will be grabbed in a terrible manner, some of them, who died with major sins, turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a long time, uh, turned away from their compulsory deeds. Yes, they're Muslims. But they have done terrible sins and they will have to be accountable. Only Allah will forgive who He wants. These types of people will deny certain things in their records. 
These people, Allah will cover their mouths and their, hand, and their hands and feet will begin to speak. Among them and among the disbelievers. They will say, my Lord, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. And he will say to them, your angels that were with you, they witness that you've done them. They'll say, no, 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 he's not, they're not my witness. I don't accept them. Your, your, your friends, your relatives, your shaitan, your, um, the other angels, your records, everything, they don't accept any of that. So Allah asks them, okay, then who, who is your witness? They will say, only myself. So then Allah says, very well. اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون. Today we shall seal their mouths and their hands and feet will be speaking to us about everything they used to do. And so Allah replies, also says that they will say to their hands and feet. They will say to them, قالوا, لِمَ شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا Why did you bear witness against us? Against me? You're my body. قالوا, they will say, Allah is the one who made us speak, the one who made everything else speak. In other words, how? How can we lie to him? He is the creator. He knows everything. In other words, are you stupid? <laughs> what are you trying to do? So your own skin and your own eyes and your own legs and feet bear witness. Yes, he did this. He touched that. He hit this person. He walked there. He looked at that. He spoke this. Then the angels will call to the believers. And when they are known, their faces are full you can tell they're a little bit scared, but the angels have comforted them. So the angels grab them as well. And they come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in a hadith it says that Allah will say to them, come closer. He will say, Abdi udnu minni. My servant, come closer to me. There are some special servants from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, udnu minni. Come closer to me. He, that, that servant keeps coming closer and closer and closer until finally the nur covers him, the hijab, covers him, and there is between him and Allah a veil, a different type of veil. No angel can hear or see, only between him and Allah. Abadan, no translator between them, and he hears, Allah SWT speaks to them. In a speech, Allah's speech, we know that Allah SWT has, has a speech, he told us this in the hadith and in the ayat, he speaks, he has a speech, but we don't know what this speech is like. There is nothing like him, and he hears and sees all things. Just like he says he hears and sees, he speaks, but how does he see? How does he hear? It's not like us. In a manner that befits him, he knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We accept it as it is, without any addition or deletion or interpretation. Just leave it as it is, without any explanation to it. But Allah speaks, and the people hear him, and they, they know what Allah is saying. And maybe if we have time on the write a hadith for you, a bit more about that, if need be. And Allah says to him, Abdi, look at your records. And he sees sins. Allah says to him, didn't you know that you did this sin and I could see you? He did it in secret. And I could see you. Didn't you know this day will come? Didn't you know that today I will question you? Didn't you know? And he will say, Rabbi, I did, I did, I did. And Allah will say to him, why did you do it? Finally, the servant will say, Oh my Lord, for you to throw me into hellfire is easier than to judge me and me standing before you with this sin. So then he looks at the other, next page. He sees another sin. Worse than the other one. Same thing happens. Then he looks, there are worse sins. And so, sin keeps growing. And this poor believer is sitting there saying, My Lord, in the end he says, Khalas, I'm, I'm actually going to hellfire. My deeds haven't been accepted. I've done all these wrong deeds, and that's why my good deeds have been invalid. So when he is certain that he's going to end up in hellfire, Allah says to him, Abdi, you know how you kept it a secret in the former life? He says, yes. He said, why did you keep it a secret? He says, because I was ashamed of my sin, my Lord. He says, satartuha alayka fid dunya. 
Don't you see I kept it a secret in the former life? I didn't expose you. And that was part of my mercy. And today, I will remain, I will keep it a secret. I will not expose it. Because look, he turns the page and he sees his first good deed. Huh. Then he turns and sees a better deed. And his deeds keeps growing. Then he turns back and the records are empty. The records are empty of his sins. The angels don't know. It's wiped off. This is in the ayah in the Quran that the sins will be forgotten. And then, in one other hadith, Allah SWT says to some of them, you knew a fault of your brother and you covered it. Today I will cover yours. Yeah, and what I mean by this is, when we do a sin in secret, you should never expose it to other people, not because you should do it in secret. No. You feel bad about doing it. But you don't go around feeling happy and showing it off in front of other people like what people do. Say, so, yeah, I did this and I did that. But don't tell mum, don't tell dad, don't tell this, don't tell the sheikh. Don't. But I did this. And they boast about it. I got her number. I went out with it. I did this. Showing off the, the sins is worse. So Allah subhanahu wa says, you were shy, you were ashamed of it. And every human being makes sins. He finds also in his book, lots of istighfar. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Glad tidings to the one who on the day of judgment will find in their records many moments where he repented to Allah. Said astaghfirullah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Astaghfirullah. Say astaghfirullah. Fa inni la astaghfiru rabbi. I say astaghfirullah in the day more than 70 times. In another hadith he says more than 100 times. This is the Prophet who was given a gift that no one else had been given. What is it? That he had been forgiven all of his sins, past, present and future. Once Aisha radiallahu anhu, anha, noticed Prophet praying in the night. And his, she says, his feet had been showing signs of... Uh, you know, they, 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 were, they were seeping past and they were cracked because of long standing in prayer. And she said to him, Give your body rest, Ya Rasulullah, your sins are forgiven, you know? Just give your body a rest. You know what the Prophet was doing? He said, Should I not be at least a thankful servant? I'm just thanking my Lord for this. That's all. If someone came up to us and said, You've been forgiven everything. How many of us will continue worshipping? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi didn't even need to worship in this case. Well, he did of course, but he didn't need to worry about his sins, in other words. Yet here he is, continuing to do voluntary work until his feet are hurt from sujood and ruku' and standing. And he says, Ya Aisha, afala akunu abdan shakura. Should I not at least be a thankful servant? I'm thanking him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man is given his book in his right. Allah says in the Quran, Those who are given their books in their right. فهو في عيشة راضية في جنة عالية قطوفها دانية كلوا واشربوا هنيئا بما أسلفتم في الأيام الخالية Which means, and as for those who are given their book in their right, they will scream out to everyone. Everyone, get up and read my book. You see, that wonderful, that, that happiness when you receive your records and you've passed and say, everyone read what's in my books. I used to believe in this day. Allah says, فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ فَ, فَ in Arabic means an immediate transformation. Not فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ Suddenly he sees himself in Jannah. Why? There are two meanings to this. Either that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts him straight into Jannah not long after, or he will go through a little bit of a phase 
but he won't feel it. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, The day of judgment is 50,000 years. How many years? 50,000 years. Allah says, في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة On a day that is equivalent to 50,000 years of ours. The companion said, one companion said, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, إنه لزمن طويل. Oh, Messenger of God, this is a long time. He said, don't worry. Wallahi, for a believer, a true believer, it will seem like as long as one prayer he prayed on earth. For a believer. Maybe because of the happiness and the comfort. The drinking from the hands of the Prophet ﷺ in Fountain of Kawthar. Remember we spoke about that last time. After the Prophet ﷺ intercedes and this is happening. The hadith is in Muslim. That the first people that, will, that the judgment will begin with in general. Is the ummah of Muhammad ﷺ. The first people that the judgment will begin with is the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a privilege. That Allah begins the hisab of them before anyone else. And the rest of the umam, the rest of the nations of the world will open and pave the way for the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be the ones who will bear witness to the messengerhood of the other messengers and prophets. When their people deny the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the witnesses that the other prophets did their message. They, 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 they carried it out. And the first thing that the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be questioned about is prayer. Rasul Sallam said, Awalu ma yuhasabu alayhi abdu as salah. The first thing the servant will be questioned about is the prayer. Wa awalu ma yukda bayna al nas ad dima. And the first thing that will be judged or accounted for between people's affairs, salat is, is Allah's right between you and Allah. People's affairs is in blood, murder. That will be the first thing that will be judged in relation to people's affairs. It is murder. First thing between Allah and His servant is the prayer. The first thing between people's rights is blood. Murder. It's the first thing among the believers. Just before that, the animals would have been judged as well. The animals, al bahain The Prophet ﷺ told us, about an animal and another animal. One had horns, the other one didn't. One of them hurt the other. Rasul Sallallahu said to his companions, this, these two animals on the day of judgment, the other one who had been wronged by the one with the horns will take its revenge. So Allah will get every animal to take its revenge from the animal that hurt it. Allah knows how. And then he will say to them, Kunu turaba, be soil. In another hadith, which is also sahih, I... Uh, followed its, its narrations, says that the animals will look at the, at the human beings and they will thank Allah, they will go to sujood, they'll actually prostrate and try to bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the angels will say to them, you have not been created to worship. They said, we are thanking our Lord. For what they say? They say, we are thanking our Lord that he did not create us humans. Because we see what they are going through. And it is because of those criminals among the humans when we were denied things in this life, it was because of their sins. We thank you, our Lord, today for giving us back our revenge and our rights. And Allah says, Kunu turaba. The criminals see this. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا And the disbeliever will say, Oh, I wish I would have also turned into soil. We'll end it here, insha'Allah, and next week we will continue the Day of Judgment. Next week, insha'Allah, we'll, be, we'll begin with who will be saved and given mercy on that day from sins which they had accumulated. 
and for what. And then we'll talk about the, the scales and hopefully the bridge over hellfire. أقول قول يا استغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك صلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين.